All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I want to take a I want to say a very special thank you to Jason Citrin and all the staff at Desert Road Racing. Uh, thank you very much for your professionalism and for putting on a great event, keeping everybody safe. Uh, when I did crash, everything went like clockwork. I got off the track as quickly as I could. I had somebody right there at turn eight that came across the track to help me out. We got the bike off the track. We got myself and the bike into a safe location. Um, we got the crash truck back on the track, got the bike off. The, every, everything went like clockwork. It, it worked out really good. Uh, so thank you guys for running a, a really professional outfit and for uh, giving us all a nice, giving us our safe space to practice our, our, uh, our, our dangerous hobby. I had a fantastic day, and I and I have to preface this that I had I had a fantastic day um, in spite of the crash. I couldn't have asked for a better wreck. Um, I was okay. My suit was relatively undamaged. Um, the helmet, unfortunately, was a loss. Uh, but you know, I only have one head, so there's not much I can do about that. Um, the bike can be fixed. Um, obviously, I got a damaged right rear set, and uh, I lost the frame slider on the right side, and uh, I also lost the right side swing arm spool, and um, all those items can be replaced, and the bike still runs, and there aren't any problems. Um, so, I don't think I could have asked for a better a wreck. I mean, if I, I guess if I'm going to wreck, that's the way to do it. I wanted to talk about my experiences that day because I really think it speaks to the frame of mind that you have to have when doing this stuff. Now, I'm uh, when it comes to the street, I honestly, I, I honestly do not believe in the, you know, there's two types of riders. There's riders that wreck, and there's riders that have it. There's there's riders that crash, and there's riders that will crash. I honestly don't believe that. Um, I do believe it's pretty much inevitable that you're going to drop your bike at some point. You know, but I mean, you can drop your bike at a standstill. You know, it's just one of those things. But uh, a, a wreck on the street, I don't think is inevitable, depending on your riding style and how skilled and talented you are at riding. It's entirely possible, I believe, to ride on the street and not crash. Um, the racetrack, on the other hand, is kind of a different animal. And I didn't really coin this phrase or this idea, but basically it comes down to this. If you want to ride fast, you're going to crash. Um, the difference between a fast rider and a good rider is a good rider learns to crash less. Now, I mean, I don't want to scare people away from doing track days because if you ride a sport bike or you ride anything that has any kind of sport-like features, honestly, the racetrack is the place for you to go. Um, you should go, even if you don't really have any desire to really, really push yourself on the racetrack. I highly encourage you to go because you're going to be able to experience the performance aspects of your motorcycle, your acceleration, your braking, your turning. Um, you're going to be able to experience all of that in a safe, controlled environment where you don't get tickets. Um, you know, there's an ambulance that's 30 seconds away. Should you hurt yourself, you're going to be in full gear. All of those things make it multiple factors more safe than doing the same behavior on the road. So let's talk about what happened. Now let's be let's let's get one thing out of the way. Um, I do not know exactly why I crashed. I can speculate, but there is no definitive evidence. I don't have any. I don't have any data. Um, I don't really have any real witnesses. Uh, I don't have any. Um, I don't have any camera views of my controls, which is something I'm going to try and work on the next time I'm at the track. Is I want to make sure that the camera is positioned where I can see my I can see my controls at all times. Um, it is most likely because of a cold because I was asking too much of a cold tire. Um, I was half a lap in and that was the first major right-hander I had had pretty much six lefts six left-hand turns at that point and I had one right-hander and it was what I got on the track 
So that was the first major right-hander, and it's a fair bet that the tire was cold on the right side, and it just was ice, and I leaned the bike over fully because my brain was warmed up, and the bike was not. Um, do Was I using tire warmers? No, I was not using tire warmers because I was under the mistaken impression that I was not a very fast rider, and again, fast is very subjective, depending on who you're comparing me to, and um, I'm not running tire warmers when I should have been because I've started picking up speed. So, that is one of the corrections that I've made going forward is I have purchased a set of tire warmers that I'll be using at the next event, whenever that may be. Um, but I wanna talk about how I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad, and let's get one thing out of the way, man. I, I'm not made of money. Um, this was a this was an expensive crash. It's uh, a couple thousand dollars worth of gear and bike parts. Um, you know, like this was an expensive crash. I'm not even mad, and I'm not even mad one because I'm I'm not hurt. I mean, that's a that's a big one. If I had been pretty banged up, I might be a little bit more uh i might feel a little bit worse about it but i wasn't even mad i was joking in the pits and having a good time and i, I wasn't even mad because i had such a great day i rode i rode so good compared to where i started uh a year ago it was basically that that was sort of my my one year anniversary of being on the racetrack um it was like my sixth track event six or maybe my seventh but say my sixth track event for sure um, I dragged me for the first time which was a huge accomplishment something that I wanted to have the courage to do and um, I started doing it consistently and reliably on the left side it was just great I mean I just felt so good like the bike just was where I wanted it to be I was carrying a good amount of speed I was keeping up with some riders of whom I've had um, an immense amount of respect for. Um, that was a huge accomplishment. Not to say I'm faster, but at the very least, I kept my own pace. It was it was a great day. And if if throwing that bike down the track was what it took to get myself to that next level, then I'm I'm okay with that. I really am. You know, education. Education costs money. You know, education's expensive. You're gonna pay one way or the other. Now, I don't wanna keep paying with crashes, but but make no mistake, you know, if that's what it takes to go to the next level to find that limit, I'm gonna do it. But um, it, it wasn't, in my opinion, it really wasn't a limit finding, uh, it wasn't a limit finding crash. It was a, it was a stupidity crash. It was a, it, it was a crash that out of impatience, um, and, but make no mistake, going forward, uh, I'm always going to uh, ride my own ride and not let, um, you know, faster riders, if they go around me, I'm not going to focus on, oh, I want to keep up with that guy and go out and have fun. It's like, I, it's, it's, I have to give myself the time to get warmed up. Um, but I, you know, I also wasn't, wasn't running tire warmers because I thought, oh, you know, tire warmers, those are only for faster riders and, and I'm not, I'm not that fast. Um, but regardless of, of whether or not you, you think I am, um, I'm carrying enough speed now that I should be, I should be running tire warmers in those instances. So that's the major correction going forward, aside from just not being impatient. But I could have been, like, my state of mind could have been totally different. I could have been mad. I could have been disappointed. Um, I could have been angry. Um, but I wasn't. I, 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 I didn't know how I would react to my first wreck on the racetrack. Um, truth be told, I'm really, I'm really afraid of, uh, like, breaking a collarbone or something like that. I don't want anything that's going to really take me out of the game for a while. But... Um, I, I expected, I actually expected that I would be a little bit more upset, uh, but I wasn't. Uh, I was like, hey, well, that, you know, that sucked. My, I was more upset that my day was over because I was doing so good. You know, if, and honestly, if, uh, if all it would have been, if all that would have been damaged would have been my frame slider, if my, if I'd have lost the rear spool and the frame slider, but my rear set would have been in play, I would have, uh, 
I would have just gotten right back on and went right back out. You know, I had to went, came in and checked the bike out, and then I would have went right back out the next session. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much the dynamics of the crash and the information about it. So if you haven't seen the video, I'll link to the crash video below. Uh, we're going to be back in business soon. I've got a lot of surprises coming for you on that particular uh, motorcycle. So stay tuned and wait and see. Thank you for riding with me today, guys. I'm almost to my destination. So uh, we will see you out there.